Hey YouTube, Montana with Sawyer's Garage here today. Um, actually this project just kind of fell in my lap here today. This is uh, going to be working on a 2007 Chevy 2500 HD uh, gas, 6 liter gas engine. Uh, this is actually my personal work truck and it has uh, encountered a coolant leak in the radiator. So today I'm actually going to be replacing that radiator. So I thought why not film it. Uh, toss it up for you guys. So I want to try to do kind of a step-by-step, -step, but I may end up glossing over a couple things because uh, I am on the clock, so I do have to work diligently to get this done. Um, so otherwise, I want to go ahead and get started. All right, so uh, one of the first steps uh, is I have to actually gain access to the radiator. Um, Chevy puts these plastic covers on top of uh, all their like, core supports and stuff but they just hold them in with these little plastic clips um, you see some of these have been off before I actually had this off earlier today and I kind of didn't put all of them back in but uh, these little plastic clips are pretty simple uh, they make a kind of special tool for them but I usually just end up using two flat headed screwdrivers that are kind of smallish and you get it on both sides and just kind of pry it up which will pull the center section out, uh, which will then allow this to squash and come popped out. So pretty simple to remove, uh, not uncommon to break them. Um, there's quite a few up here. Uh, some of them have been gone for probably a while at this point. This work truck's got 190,000 on it. So uh, this probably isn't the first time this has been off. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these pulled off and then I'll be able to lift this cover up out of the way. All right, so I got that top off, no big deal. Pop the rest of those clips out. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of gloss over a little bit what I'm about to be doing. Um, I'm obviously, I'm gonna drain the coolant out of the bottom of the radiator. Uh, I'm gonna see if there's a pet cock at the bottom, and if there is, I'm just gonna undo that and drain it out into uh, like a catch pan. Uh, if for some reason there's not, I will just unhook the lower radiator hose and drain it out that way. Um, so just kind of be prepared for quite a bit of coolant coming out. This particular radiator has got uh, transmission cooler built into it, uh, which I believe is what these two lines are. It's going to be the transmission cooler. And then on the other side, it's got some more lines going to it. Let's see, uh, there's one of them, and there's another one down there. And I believe that to be the oil cooler. So all those are going to have to get disconnected. And obviously you're going to end up losing some transmission fluid, you're going to end up losing some oil. So, uh, all things to kind of keep in mind when you start this project. Hey you guys, so just a little update. Um, I am going to go ahead and pull this intake tube out of the way. Um, on this 6 liter, it's pretty simple. There's a hose clamp here uh, at the uh, filter access. There's going to be a hose clamp up here on the throttle body. And then on this particular one here on this 6 liter, uh, and maybe the other ones are the same, it's got this little connection that goes into the side of this housing. So uh, just pop that, it literally just pops right out. And uh, it'll kind of get some things out of the way, kind of clean it up a little bit, make it a little easier to work around in here. All right, kind of just an update on where I'm at. Uh, I went ahead and obviously I pulled that intake tube out. Um, I went ahead actually and just pulled the air box out too because it really just it has three little push-in uh, deals right there that just sits in here uh, and I get a lot more room to work once that's out. Uh, I've pulled the hose off of this little nipple right here which is kind of just like a pressure hose uh, with coolant and then I went ahead and pulled the one off the lower hose which runs up to the engine block. Um, now what I'm getting ready to do is drop the lower radiator hose to drain the coolant out of the radiator. Uh, so this is where the mess is going to happen. A little bit. Alright, a little update. Uh, we're still dripping a little bit. Uh, but obviously I was able to get the radiator drained out. Um, now I'm looking at a Basically a fan shroud that's going to have to come out. That's going to be my next step here. Um, but I was able to get that lower hose unhooked. Uh, probably got you know a little bit into the bucket. Not as much as I'd like. 
Um, this upper hose, I went ahead and unhooked it from the radiator on the other side, and then I had to undo that little round clamp, uh, and then I just tucked it up out of the way. You know, a lot of this stuff, no sense actually removing it from the vehicle entirely if you can just fold it up out of the way. Um, it's going to keep it from leaking out coolant, and it's just going to be right there ready to go whenever I need it. So, what I'm going to start by doing is unbolting. I got two of these bolts up at the top for this shroud, and then I've got some clips that you can kind of see uh, going around on each side on the shroud, and then I should be able to remove the upper portion. Um, and that should hopefully gain me access to the rest of what I need. All right, guys, so I've got the oil cooler lines disconnected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these transmission cooler lines real quick as well. Um, one thing to note is that these lines are kind of a little goofy. If, uh, you know, if you're expecting them just to unscrew or whatever, they don't. Um, basically, what I, so I do it. There may be a better way. It's kind of how I know to do it. Is you kind of take this black cover, pry it back, and it should go. Anyways, so you can get that pried back. And now what you're gonna find underneath here is this metal clip. Uh, this metal clip, if you can get a small screwdriver in there, you can lift it up. Hopefully you can see this angle. So you can kind of lift it up and pop that clip out. And so, that's the clip that holds that line in. And now at this point, this line, I'm going to put it back right now, but that line is free. Um, there's one at the bottom. I'm going to have to do the same thing too as well. And then I will be ready to unbolt the radiator and pull it out. Currently draining some training fluid down into my bucket. Uh, I believe, I'm going to find out here in a minute, but the only thing I got left is these two top bolts. And then this radiator should be able to lean back and out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and get them unbolted and we'll find out. All right, so we got the old radiator out. Uh, I'm just opening up the box for my new radiator. This one came from Napa, 2813. So it comes with my new fittings. This side, good deal, and it comes with all new clips and O-rings and everything else. I'll have to put those on. All right, well, looks good. I'm going to get her out of the box and get my fitting screwed in and then get it ready to put into the car. All right, so I've got my new radiator laid out. Uh, there was a couple things I had to swap over from the old radiator to the new one. Um, at the top, both of these rubber grommets, um, they do go through those holes. They just kind of pry out. And then at the bottom, it comes with these posts on the new one. I'll see this is the old one now. Uh, you have to pop these feet off and snap them into the other one. Kind of a tip, the way you get these feet off is you take a screwdriver and you push in. Uh, you can kind of see how that is kind of perforated there. Uh, you can push in and that allows it to pop off. So I did get these in, but they're just hand tight right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, just a little crescent wrench 
that I've got and go ahead and tighten them down. All right, I grab my my little adjustable wrench here and uh, go ahead and get these snug down. Perfect. All right, so new radio is bolted back in. Uh, I will take this fan shroud. It kind of clips in to the radiator. I'm going to end up doing that on both sides. I just kind of want to get it out of the way real quick. I'm going to take my line. I can get that in camera. And this new, new line should just, basically when you force it in, it should just pop right in. Uh, okay, so I just went ahead, because uh, like I said, I am on the clock. Um, I just went ahead and knocked everything out. Got it all put back together here. Uh, I've got my hoses put back on and connected. Um, I just need to add coolant to it, run it, add some more coolant, run it, probably add some more coolant, and uh, just make sure she's topped off here. Um, hypothetically speaking, we did lose a little bit of oil, and we also lost a little bit of automatic transmission fluid. So um, it is definitely wise to check those levels before you go driving off, just to make sure. Um, I didn't lose a whole lot, but I probably lost maybe a quarter quart of transmission fluid and virtually no oil uh, maybe just a little bit that was held up in the old radiator uh, in that cooler so I'm just going to be prepared for that but other than that I'm going to go ahead and put some coolant in it get it running and call it good all right so we are all wrapped up and done I uh, got this radiator replaced here obviously in these trucks you can't really see it Radiator in, everything's hooked up, nothing's leaking. I uh, got the coolant topped off, just letting it run for a little longer. But uh, she is good to go. So, uh, the mess that I made, uh, you know, only recommendation maybe get something a little larger than a bucket to try to catch everything with uh, because that definitely added to my cleanup quite a bit. But uh, Hopefully this video helped you somewhat and feel free uh, to like and subscribe. I got more videos on the way.